Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and Panther fans everywhere. I want to welcome you to Center Park Stadium and those watching on ESPN Plus, as well as those members of the Atlanta media that are with us this morning. Welcome to Center Park Stadium, where we have a special announcement regarding the future of the Georgia State Panther football program. At this time, it's my pleasure to welcome to the podium Georgia State's president, Dr. M. Brian Blake. Thanks everyone, thank you for being here. Coach McGee, on behalf of the entire Georgia State community, I would like to welcome you, your wife Linda, and son Austin to the university. The campus couldn't be more excited to have you as a part of the family. Let me also thank our athletic director, Charlie Cobb, for his leadership, partnership, friendship. I don't think you could find a better partner than Charlie, Coach McGee. Like me, I know you're gonna fall in love with, with Georgia State um, just 25 years ago, we were a fully commuter campus, and now we're 52,000 students, six different campuses, and large institution in Georgia, and one of the biggest landowners in the city of Atlanta. Since then, the student experience has really changed over incredibly. Athletics is a huge part of that, and of course, football. Uh, it has a huge impact on our student engagement, which is a direct contributor to our student success. Coach McGee, in our conversations last week, I was so impressed with your knowledge of the game, modern collegiate football, your care for the players, your staff, uh, your wherewithal for fundraising, and apparently you're a wizard at recruiting. So we're, we're looking for <laughs> And most of all, your ambitious vision for the future of Georgia State football. When the news of your appointment started to spread, I had friends from 30 years singing your praise. I had a college mate and fraternity brother who played against you in college football. One friend who's a referee, he actually, uh, he actually coached during your high school days. He said great things. Apparently, your good friend of Pedro Cherry, who's now the president of Atlanta Gas, he sent his support almost immediately. And then a flood of coaches and players, both in college and professional uh, sports. So finally, um, I had so many people from UGA curse me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say this with uh, no disrespect to my colleague, President Moorhead, but as a Georgia Tech alum, I took a lot of gratification in that. <laughs> so Coach McGee, so excited to have you. You have my total support. You have the university's total support. So let the McGee era begin. Thank you, Dr. Blake. Right now, I'd like to introduce Georgia State's Director of Athletics, Charlie Cobb. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do this with, uh, without using my glasses, but uh, as we all age, sometimes these notes get a little, uh, little rough. But uh, I wanna first welcome everybody here. What a great day for our university, for our football program. Uh, a couple of people I'd really like to thank, um, a couple of my colleagues, uh, Kelsey Rozier, I know she's probably in the back because she hides. Doug Justice, likewise. I see Patrick sitting down here and Brad Horton. Um, the four of us, or really the five of us, the four of them and myself, really spent the last 10 or 12 days uh, trying to identify the best candidate that we could bring to Georgia State for a football program and, and sincerely thank them because uh, a lot of work that people don't get to see uh, behind the scenes and <clears throat> making this happen. I also want to thank Amar Aga and Kerry Hayward in our university attorney's office. Um, there's a lot of information that flows in something like this, the visibility of it. And the reality of it is, is probably 75% of it is actually truth at some point in the future, but not really when it's, it's being discussed. Um, you have to walk through a path, you have to walk through a process to, uh, to get things done, to, uh, to hire a coach and, and a coach of the caliber of Coach McGee. And so at the end of the day, it's a, it takes a village, as they say. Um, and last but not least, certainly, I want to thank Sean Elliott and the staff for the last seven years. Um, you know, the simple way I can explain it is that you're supposed to leave a place better than you found it. And I think that's what these guys have done, done for our football program. Um, <clears throat> I saw baseball coach Brad Stromdahl in the back, and one of the great things that we like to joke about is I didn't play a lot of baseball growing up because I couldn't hit a curve. Um, i got to be honest with you, I think over the last 10 or 12 days, I learned to stand in the box and hit one because uh, we got thrown a curve uh, with the help of my colleagues. Um, we, uh, we put a lot of work into this and, uh, and certainly uh, incredibly pleased with the outcome. Um, coaching searches are hectic, um, but you have to be efficient with your time. You get to listen to a lot of voices. A lot of people think 
they understand Georgia State or they know Georgia State. And so you have to walk through what is the best fit or the person who's the best fit for, for our institution. And uh, um, Dell comes incredibly highly recommended. Um, it was part of the intrigue. It was part of the, the excitement. Um, Canley, when we, we've had a few times to spend time at length to talk about vision for a program and how you run it and all the things that go into it. And it just, you know, people ask me, do you sleep much? I didn't sleep much because I was so excited at the thought of the opportunity having a chance to hire him to lead our football program. And I kind of wanted time to speed up, you know, in this process to be able to make it happen. Uh, when, you walk in, when you walk in the building, you'll see a sign that talks about the three core values of our athletic program. Compete with a purpose, selflessness, and be a positive leader. And that's what I kept going back to in this process, and I think it defines very well Coach McGee. He's a winner, he's a leader, and he exudes positivity. And that's, at the end of the day, that's all we can look for in a coach for a football program to lead our, our team, our campus, our university. And I think you'll, uh, I'm not the greatest at social media, uh, I, I'll be honest. But I've seen enough to know that people are excited about, about what he can do for our program. And, and that the challenge is, frankly, it's like it's always been, right? Turn the social media excitement, the energy into butts in seats, people at the game buying tickets. It's real simple. Um, I think everybody knows we have a football team. Everybody knows Del McGee's our coach. And there's a lot of enthusiasm and excitement about the future and what we can do. Now it's time for us to, to quantify that excitement. So with further ado, I want to introduce next head football coach, Dale McGee. Favor. What number did you wear at Auburn? 24. There it is. So, <laughs> a little bit after folks. Ah, what an honor. Great morning to be a Georgia State football head coach. Uh, I must say that I'm very, very humbled and honored to be in this position. It's been a long time coming, and I'm very gracious for this opportunity to lead this program into a consistent winning program. I must first say that I must thank Dr. Blake and his leadership of the university, uh, also Charlie Cobb and all the committee that was involved in hiring myself. It was a first class uh, hiring. Uh, you can actually see how the leadership is aligned and uh, the alignment will create success here at Georgia State. Uh, secondly, I must thank Coach Smart uh, and the University of Georgia, starting with Greg McGarity, Josh Brooks, uh, Mary Beth, Kirby's wife, and a lot of other colleagues that I work with at the University of Georgia that believed in me, gave me a lot of confidence in taking this job, and I can't thank them enough for everything that I learned and what we're going to do here at Georgia State University. Uh, more importantly, I must thank my wife, Linda, who's in the crowd. She's about to cry. I can see it in her eyes. <laughs> but she's the real uh, captain of our ship. Uh, my son, Austin, who isn't here today, he's at, actually at Athens Academy attending school. He wanted to go to school and work out, and he wanted to watch the press conference later. So I respected his wishes. But you know, being a coach's wife is not easy. She has to deal with a lot of long hours, uh, time away, uh, hours on the road, and she's been a, a rock and my champion in this regard, and I love you for that, Boo. Uh, secondly, I would like to uh, thank Gus Malzahn for getting me into college sports. He gave me an opportunity in 2013 at Auburn. I was a high school coach for a long time and he afforded me that itch that I was having to get into college athletics. Uh, and then after that, Willie Fritz, who's a mentor, uh, and I speak to him on a regular basis, afforded me the opportunity to start the FBS program, you know, at that school down south. Um, <laughs> and um, 
he's been very instrumental in, in, in guiding me in this process as well. And I got to thank all the high school coaches that I've ever competed against, competed with. I'm going to need the entire state of Georgia to uh, kind of lock arms and know that we are going to do a tremendous job of recruiting great student athletes with character that believe in hard work and that has a vision for the future of being competitive consistently. Uh, Georgia State has done a great job thus far. I have to commend Coach Elliott and his staff for what they've done. Uh, it's not an easy time for the young men uh, downstairs, but I met with them prior to coming up here, and I can tell you this, that they're chomping at the bits to work. They're enthused, and um, I just see a, a bunch of great young men that has an outstanding future ahead of them. Uh, furthermore, I would like to uh, thank Bill Curry when he first started his program and all the past Panthers and future Panthers to come. This is your place. I'm just part of the, uh, the process of trying to make the vision come, come to fruition of compete, competing on a high level. And as far as our football team is concerned, we're going to be tough, fast, physical. We will demand that in the organization. There will not be one stone that goes unturned while I'm your head football coach. We'll be diligent in details. Uh, we'll look for new ways to do things. We're not going to stay stale. We're going to be reinventive. And with that being said, uh, I'll take any further questions. Yes. Coach, what was it that was especially attractive about this job that you wanted to pursue? First off, I've coached 21 plus years in the state of Georgia. My teeth are cut in the state of Georgia. Atlanta is the best city in the nation. And just the high schools in the Atlanta area, along with the quality coaches that Georgia has, this job is a, with a five hour radius in the states that butt up against Georgia. We have plenty of student athletes that we can acquire, identify, and develop. And that's the plan, is to make sure that everything aligns with our vision uh, of identifying, uh, developing, and then making them the best versions of themselves. Uh, so, and plus the leadership of Charlie, I think we're going to work well together. Uh, there's a lot of things that um, will be stressed, and he's, we're moving in the right direction and making sure we answer the bell when it comes to things that we're going to need to be successful. Hey, Coach, back here. What was the most important thing you learned from Coach Smart that you hope to implement here at Georgia State? Uh, the most important thing, I wouldn't say, is a multitude of things. Um, the one thing I would say is uh, you create value on your team with competition, and we're going to recruit players that want to compete, that like, that like things hard. Uh, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough, but you know, life is tough. So everything that we're going to do on and off the football field in the classroom are things that are going to prepare these young men for the next 40 to 50 years of their life. Uh, and just the details and, and uh, his passion. Uh, you, uh, I wear my emotions on my sleeve. I know it don't seem like it, but I'm, I'm a very good adjuster. Um, we just had a great time with the, with the current team. Uh, I think they see my personality. I think you got to be able to change gears as a coach. And um, we're going to have fun. We're going to laugh. We're going to work. And uh, they're going to get their butt kicked, too. But, uh, <laughs> but we're going to roll our sleeves up, and we're going to do this thing together. Hey, Coach, right here in the back. You talked about the wide array of talent that's around the state. A lot, you come from one of the most talent-rich areas in Columbus. You've recruited that area hard with UGA, and Georgia State has traditionally recruited that area hard. Just talk about the things you've learned from coaching in that area and recruiting in that area. Um, coaching in that area, uh, very competitive. There's a really good high school football there, really good coaches. Uh, even if you consider the entire Chattahoochee Valley with Central across the way, which is a very good byproduct of Columbus. Um, the kids are developed. Um, they love football, which it, that's what it takes. But also, 
they want to be great. They want to be coached hard. Uh, they want to see what the future holds and how we can hold them accountable and press them to their limits. Uh, one thing about Columbus people, we don't need a whole lot. Uh, that was, you know, one of the concerns, I think, uh, me coming from Georgia where we have all the bells and whistles to where we're moving in the right direction. And I will want to move our facilities in the right direction. But that was no concern of mine because what I inherited as a first time head coach at Carver High School, we had the bare minimum, but we got our kids to uh, play with a passion, believe in our philosophy and accomplish some great things. And it's all about the people. Uh, the people we require, as long as they see that I'm real, our coaching staff, the realness of our staff, uh, and that they're important and that we care, I know they're going to run, for, run through a brick wall for us. Hey, Coach. Uh, what is your relationship with Jonas Hayes? Do you have one? And was he part of, the, part of your consultation in this process? Uh, I know who Jonas Hayes is, the head basketball coach here. Uh, he, he, he did reach out. Uh, we had some great conversations, and I can't wait to connect with him. And uh, you know, hopefully we can get all of our coaches kind of to go in the city and kind of get together and get some of our past and uh, players and, and donors to kind of talk and have some conversations about you know, the future of what college football is kind of going to. Uh, he said he couldn't be here today. He had practice or a game coming up, but uh, I know we're going to connect very soon. Yes? What are your thoughts on coaching your son? Um, I think that'd be a better question for him. <laughs> uh, one thing I can say, uh, being, you know, coached the last eight years at Georgia, uh, I was out of his life a lot. I do think this will be a time where I'm able to spend more time with him uh, and actually coach him because I was trying to be a father, so I supported him from afar. So it wasn't about trying to make him a better football player, so to speak. It was just basically me being there for him as a father, giving him father day advice and uh, a little bit of coaching, but very minimal because uh, it's enough pressure on coaches' kids as it is. And uh, I just want to make sure his mental health and uh, things of that sort were moving in the right direction. Yes? Could you share with us Kirby's reaction when you told him you were planning on leaving? And also, um, why now? You said it's a long time coming. Why now? Why are you making the move to be a coach? All right, first off, uh, Coach Smart was in Hawaii this week. So <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, in charge of. Uh, our team uh, back in Athens. And we had six o'clock workouts too. So it was, uh, this week has been very, very, very tough. But Coach Smart really supported the decision. Uh, he, uh, we had deep conversations. It, it wasn't necessarily about finances. He, uh, he was very encouraging and he knew that I wanted to be a head coach and he felt like this was a great opportunity for me to seize, and he thought that this was a really, really good fit, and he was 100% behind me. Uh, and we kind of jokingly made some jokes where I said, uh, I know you're gonna be trying to recruit my players because I'm gonna bring some in. And in the portal world, I, I get it, and it, it's part of you know what we're dealing with in college. But uh, we're gonna be a great resource to one another, and uh, that friendship and that love that I have for him and Mary Beth are, are more than words can express. They have meant a lot to my career. They've, been, they've meant a lot to my family. And uh, I'm very appreciative of the time I spent with Coach Smart of building that program to where it is today. And I wouldn't be here before you without uh, working with Coach Smart. What's your philosophy with recruiting? You just mentioned the portal changed the dynamic of recruiting so much. How do you want to implement that here at Georgia State? And maybe what have you learned in these early yeah, I still feel believe I still believe that high school will be the route to go. Uh, kids still want to get developed. Uh, they're younger. They may not have the film from a college standpoint, but I'm all about development. We will use the portal to supplement our roster, but we're gonna cut our teeth in the high school recruiting. There's a lot of talent that goes unnoticed. Uh, this state is heavily recruited. It's one of the top states that produce 
NFL football players per capita. So we just got to make sure we find the right diamonds in the rough, develop those guys, and try to keep the big guys from taking our players. Uh, <laughs> Right here. Uh, you just you said you just met with the team. I'm curious, what was your message to them, especially after what has been a wild couple of weeks for them? Yeah, I told them, uh, you know, this is life. Uh, the coaching profession is a tough business. It's rewarding, but you know they're not to blame for the situation that they've been put in. But I just reassured them that I'm the right man for the job. We're gonna get the right coaches in place to make them better versions of themselves and compete for championships. And they were very ecstatic. Uh, I could tell they're eager to get the work. They're very anxious, uh, uh, next step, so to speak. Um, and, and I'm gonna allow them to have a voice in this, in this program as well. Uh, they're gonna guide me and, 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 and guide me through some possible pitfalls where I don't fall into. Um, I'm, a, I'm a player's coach. I'm a, my door is going to be always open. We have an open door policy. Um, we actually scheduled some meetings. I'm going to meet from 4 to 9 o'clock today with every player on our team and get the remaining players tomorrow, try to get their parents on the phone uh, via FaceTime so they can connect the dots there. Uh, plan on meeting with the current staff uh, and everyone that's involved in Georgia State athletics so I can make sure that we're kind of going in the, in the right direction and make sure we're aligned properly and letting them know, you know, what the standard is and how we're going to do things on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes? Um, what are your thoughts on NIL and how do you plan on navigating through the world of the Wild Wild West, which is what it is right now? Uh, yes, yeah, the Wild Wild West, but uh, we are, we're going to attack NIL. Uh, I believe there's you know six million plus people around the Atlanta area. Uh, there's several Fortune 16 to 20 Fortune 500 companies here. There's a lot of Georgia fans that uh, and business people that not only support Georgia but they're Dale McGee supporters. And I'm going to reach back and and meet as many as people as meet as many people as I can to get our NIL working in the right direction. I don't want to give up too many things on how we're going to incorporate it, but we do have a plan in place that will be, uh, I would say, it won't be all about playing, but it'll also involve how you practice, uh, how you do academically, so that way the NIL or pay to play will be structured in a, in a fashion where uh, you will compete and what you do will show your worth. Coach, welcome to Georgia State. Sorry. <laughs> well, welcome to Georgia State. And have you given yourself a chance to think about the first game of all times to come to Georgia State? Your first game is the folks about six blocks away. Yeah, we, I brought that up in a team meeting this morning, too. And uh, <laughs> it was very exciting. And uh, I don't want to say too much about that. But just know we're going to be ready to play. Yes, uh, plan is to try to get a staff in place. Um, our kids go on spring break in a couple of weeks. We have a team meeting at 7 o'clock, which they know uh, when they come back from spring break. Hopefully we have our staff in place by then. Uh, have some meetings. We'll start walkthroughs on Monday morning, and we'll practice Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And we'll finish out with our remaining 12 days and uh, try to evaluate and allow our our kids to see us coach and see what we're going to be on both sides of the ball. Uh, we're going to have a, a really, really tough time getting all this together this shortly. But just like I told our players, you know, I've been in a situation like this before when I first got hired and Coach Wallace Davis of Carver High School, when I got that head job, he retired in the summer. So I ended up inheriting the program very late. Uh, but we got plenty of time for football. It's going to be more so connecting the dots with my players and them knowing us as coaches and really peeling back the onion, so to speak, of understanding each other wise and why we play this game, why you're motivated, what's your, uh, what, what makes you tick as a player, person, and so forth and so on. Yes? 
offensive and defensive schemes going forward? Yep, good question. Um, I would say this, you can expect us to have a plan to be successful, and it's going to start with uh, ball security and, and takeaways. I'm going to be the ball security police, and I'm also going to be the biggest advocate of our defensive guys ripping the ball off of offensive players. Everything starts with taking care of the football and creating turnovers, because if you can win the turnover margin, you got a chance to be very successful. Secondly, we're going to get our explosive players the ball, whether it's running or passing, because uh, uh, generating explosive plays and having more explosive plays as opposed to giving them up is another indicator of winning and losing football games. So we will have a stat for that. Uh, then thirdly, uh, play great special teams. Uh, with, play with great, unbelievable effort. Uh, fourth, Panthers won't be Panthers. We're not going to go on the field and have 10 guys or 12 guys. That would be coaches' responsibilities. But we also won't have any, or emphasize, won't have any post or pre-snap penalties involved. That, that's a di direct reflection of me and the com uh, composure piece and being disciplined and, and making sure that we're not beating ourselves. And then we want to make sure that we win the fourth quarter. There won't be any scoreboard. We may be up by 30, but we're always going to hold up them fours, and we're going to always try to outscore our opponent in the fourth quarter. That will be a measurement of our kind of plan. Uh, we plan to be balanced on offense and defense. We will have some NFL, quote, unquote, background philosophy. But I feel like we'll be able to go spread, tempo, huddle, no huddle. So we'll have the entire gamut on offense. Uh, defense will be – a little bit of odd, a little bit of four down, and we'll be an attacking style of defense and create chaos through our uh, blitz patterns and things of that sort. And uh, a lot of that's really going to be based on the players and what they can and can't do. And as coaches, we're going to be responsible for making sure that it's all about putting our best players in position to make plays and making sure we don't overload them with too much information. And I don't even know if this was the right manner. I, don't, I just started asking questions. So I, I think somebody was supposed to take over. It but. seems to work. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for attending this morning. It's an exciting day at Georgia State in athletics. Welcome to everybody, and uh, thank for your ongoing support of Georgia State University football and Georgia State athletics. Thank you.